Hello and welcome to Wilderness TV. This week we are heading off across the pond to Zapata in Cuba, fly fishing the flats for bonefish and tarpon. But first a 12 hour flight via Madrid to Havana. Hello and welcome to Cuba. We finally made it to Havana. Before we set off to our final destination where we'll be fishing, I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend that the traveling angler spends at least a day in the city. After a whistle stop tour of Havana, we head by coach to the Zapata Peninsula where we board our home for the next week, the yacht Georgiana. Full of character, the Georgiana then makes her way to the deep water mooring some four hours steam from where we boarded her on the Bay of Pigs. Dave and the gang kit up, ready for a perfect afternoon fly fishing on the flats. Well, okay then, we've finally got here after a long journey and uh, we're actually going out. The weather is perfect and we're under the guidance of our head guide, Marcus. And this is Marcus. Say hi, Marcus. That's, uh, Hello. He's going to be looking after us today. Uh, hopefully, we'll have some action. The eight of us are split between six skiffs, four singles and two doubles. We rotate throughout the week, giving everyone three days in a double skiff and three days in a single skiff. Right, we're off. I team up with Dave Grove from Fishing Worldwide as he shows me what boat fishing is all about. We've just travelled to the flats uh, where Marcus is going to uh, position the boat with the wind in the right direction and possibly with the sun behind us. Uh, and then we'll slowly pole to where uh, Marcus knows that there'll be some fish and hopefully uh, within a short time of finding them, we, we shall start catching them. So within minutes of arriving, we came across our first shoal of bonefish, and two or three casts later, I'm into my first fish. So there we have the first bonefish of the trip. It's only a small one, but yeah. uh, we've started off nicely. Marcus has placed us in an amazing position where we are ambushing shoal after shoal of bonefish as they leave their feeding ground on an ebbing tide. As you can see, I strip strike these fish, 
By striking in this way, it doesn't give the fish time to spit the fly out. And don't forget to keep your hand away from the reel whilst they are running, otherwise it's very easy to get broken off and of course it hurts too. This pod of bonefish here, they might be small, but they certainly put up a good account for themselves. Well, when the fish took, I kept all the line away from the reel, away from any snags, and then and I waited until I got it onto the onto the reel, where now it can it can run to its heart's content. And I'll just try and get him back a little bit, but he will take off any minute. There he goes. I'm keeping steady pressure on the fish, not giving it any slack line at all. Now, as you've seen, I've played these fish quite hard. Uh, the idea being is that they don't run out of steam when you release them, because if you play them for a long while and they're really tired, they swim away slowly, and then any predators in the area are able to catch them. So play them as hard as you can, as they let, hard as they'll let you, release them, and then they'll have plenty of energy to swim off quite quickly and avoid predators. After a great start, Dave hits fish after fish. It's soon time for a spot of lunch on one of the many small islands that run throughout the flats. Of course, the beauty of coming to places like this, total wilderness, um, you make lovely friends, and it's sometimes not only of the human kind. As you can see, I've got my little friend that's appeared behind me, and it looks like he's gonna be my friend for life, especially if I just drop him a little tidbit or two in a minute. It's been going great this morning. Uh, Marcus dropped us onto some fish, as, you, uh, as you've seen. They're not particularly big fish at this particular time but uh, hey it's the first afternoon and it's a tight line uh, and we're catching fish that weren't put there just for us so uh, yeah it's gone very well um, I think uh, Marcus what have I had uh, seven fish or eight fish now eight, eight. yeah I've had eight fish in about two hours so you know as, as bone fishing goes that's pretty good I think uh, we'll see what happens after lunch but I'm sure from what we've seen this morning 
Um, it's going to be the same in a minute. Uh, Marcus is a brilliant guide. He knows these waters well and um, he's going to put us on the fish, I'm sure. Right, well, so uh, the tide has gone out, um, so it's, uh, it's uncovered these beautiful, pristine flats where uh, Marcus suggested we come and start wading. And uh, within five minutes of climbing out the boat, we came across a small shoal of fish, and uh, the second or third cast on, uh, onto them, I had, I had one fish. Um, as again, I played it fairly hard, and it swam away with lots of vigor. That's, that's the way I like to do it. Um, and if you take a look at this flat, it's vast, and I'm sure there's more fish to come. When you wade these flats, or any flats that you, you, you fish for for bonefish, um, you must walk very quietly, because the fish can hear you. And the idea is to just creep along, just without splashing your feet, but just shuffling them through. And uh, sometimes the fish will come right up to you if they haven't heard you. As in this case, they, they got within about 30 feet of me, uh, because we, we stopped and we stood still, and. Uh, second or third cast and I had that little one and now we'll uh, we'll carry on walking and uh, see what see what else we can find hopefully some bigger fish and hopefully some tailing fish in fact Marcus has just pointed out while we're talking some more fish coming up towards us so let's see if I can have those ones as well yeah I see them Marcus right Very gently fly. Quick. A very dangerous moment. Don't put your hand anywhere near that reel until it stops. Then you can pick up on the on the weight of the fish, but keep the rod bent and high. This is bone fishing at its best, stalking the fish in very shallow water. The day is all too soon over and we head back to the Georgiana.
As a couple of the guys have lost flies today, Dave gives us a masterclass in tying a bonefish fly. After a fantastic day on the flats and losing a few flies, I always bring a fly tying kit with me just to uh, restock the fly box. And I'm going to tie one of my favourite flies, which is a super gotcha. Um, I start by putting the, the um, hook in the vise and I always run a little bead of super glue along the hook shank uh, because w when you're tying the, the saltwater flies you want them to be really strong and well put together and you don't want them to come apart. So I, my favourite uh, super gotcha, I mean there's lots of different uh, patterns of the gotchas and super gotchas but I've, I've found um, the, the one that I tie really suits me and um, I catch a lot of fish on it, so I just carry on using this one. First of all, I'm tying in what I call, it's, it's not a tail, it's actually the eyes of the shrimp. The gotcha is a, is a good imitation of a fleeing shrimp. So we tie in the um, micro chenille, and uh, we'll, we'll adjust this later because all it is is two eyes but uh, I'll adjust the length of it later, once the fly is finished. But we'll start off with it like that. And the next step is to actually put the bead eyes on, and I wind the, the tying thread to just over halfway. Another little drop of super glue. Again, the whole fly is super glued right throughout its tying procedure. We don't want it to come apart. So figure of eight to start with, just adjust its uh, position and then is what I do is, is I run round the chain bead eye a few times and pull tight, run round again two or three times and pull tight. It's a very simple fly to tie. Anyone can tie one of these, but it's so effective. Next, we're going to put the body of the fly in. Now, lots of gotchas have a, a really um, glittery, silvery body, but I've, I find these days, I prefer to dub some tan rabbit hair for the body rather than have a glittery, shiny, Body, a body which, which very often puts the fish off. But to be on the safe side, this is what we do here. We tie in the body, and also it has a, um, a nice little sort of leg, leggy appearance. You don't have to be too precise about it. The breeze, by the way, is blowing my materials all over the place. So we'll just put that in there. Now is what I'm going to do, is I'm going to figure of eight some rabbit fur, actually between the eyes. Keep it fairly loose because you want it to be a shaggy appearance, just like a shrimp. Next we'll put in the beard. Now the beard is there the beard is there to actually uh, imitate the legs of the shrimp. And for this I use tan colored uh, nyat hair. Nyat um, is a very durable and uh, stiff material and it holds its, holds its shape really well uh, when in the water. And this you want to be quite long. This is why I call it the super gotcha because it, it needs to have a really long beard. You'll notice I'm not putting any glittery stuff, any, any tinsel, nothing in the fly. We really don't want this fly to, to be like that because spooky fish just, just don't like bling on a fly. So there we are, there's the beard in shape. Now we trim off. And the fly is nearly finished now, it's that simple. So now is what I do, is I just tie down the surplus hair and try and keep the head into a carrot shape as much as possible. 
Now we're done with the main tine silk. And I just snip that and put it to one side. And I find that um, to have a coloured head, especially a red head on a gotcha, gotcha um, really triggers the fish into taking. So th for that, I just get some normal red tine silk. And then I just finish off the fly. by building a red carrot shaped head. Put plenty of turns on to, to, to cover it up, to cover the white tine silk up. And there we have it, a very, very simple fly to tie, yet so effective. Now I said earlier I'm going to deal with the eyes, which I will do now. They're nearly finished. They want to be just a, a little bit shorter than that. So we trim them to that length. And then I'll get a, a brown marker pen and just color the, just color the end of the chenille like that just to give it the impression of the two eye sockets. So there we have it, the super gotcha. And now I'm going to just touch some super glue onto the head. The finished fly, super gotcha, is one of my favorite and most effective bonefish flies. Right, what we're doing today is we're gonna try for a different species. First off, we're gonna be going down um, for an hour's run to where the tarp on a line. We've had such a good time on the flats for the bonefish. It's time to change and uh, sample the diversity of this fishery. We've got a great guide with us here today, Darianne. He knows the water really well. Um, and we're going to go off any minute now and see what we can do. Right, we've arrived at our destination now, and uh, Ariane suggested I put on a, a black death, which I'll show you. It's a favourite fly around here in uh, in Zabata area. So we've just stopped short at where we're going to be fishing. So Ariane will now pole us to where he thinks there's going to be some tarpon line, and. Um, We'll get going and uh, see what we can produce. Ariane was splashing the water just now and by splashing the water it can sometimes wake the tarpon up and bring them out of their hidey holes. It's a good trick that the guides know, and I used to do it when I was guiding too. And I set that hook really, that's what's called jumping a poon. Yeah, 
you jump them and they come off. So we just call it jumping the poons. But, you know, the take and the jump and the, and the fight, it doesn't matter if they come off because you're going to release them anyway. But uh, the excitement of the tarpon taking and setting the hook is, is what tarpon fishing is about. These fish are lying tight in the mangroves. After casting, I let the fly sink for a few seconds and had an instant take. After the initial strike, it's important to strike two or three times more to make sure you set the hook properly into their bony mouth. These aren't the big the big giant tarpon that you get in the summer months on the migration run. These are resident juvenile tarpon, but they're very, very good fun on a fly rod. Keep the side strain on. See, he's still got lots of strength in him. It looks like they're beat, but believe you me, they're nowhere near until they're actually on this side on the surface. As long as the leader's touched, which it is now, we can count it as a landed fish. And the way, the way you land them, if you want to bring them in the boat, is you hold them by the bottom jaw and then lift them in gently to unhook. And if it's a big tarpon, don't bring it in the boat. Just unhook it by the boat and release it gently. Smaller tarpon, you can bring them in if you want to. But uh, Darian released that nicely and it swam away. And so we can count that as a landed tarpon because he had hold of the leader.
Although these are juvenile, they provide great sport on light fly fishing tackle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a, a black death tarpon fly. Uh, I've run out all but one fly and the rest of the group have requested that I, I make a black death for them as well. So here we go. First of all I lay the silk down towards the back of the hook because we don't want the whole hook used for a tarpon fly. And um, once again I put a little bead of super glue before I put the first layer of tying silk on. And you just bring it up to the first quarter and back again. And then I lay the black rabbit hair in place, which forms the, uh, the tail. These tarpon flies are very primitive. Tarpon themselves are very primitive. They're a prehistoric fish. And there really is nothing to it. 
So you lay the rabbit tail in. Yeah, I've tied it in too long, which I'll uh, adjust in a minute. And then it's just a simple exercise of winding a, a red hackle or fur around the head of the fly. Once again, I just tie it in over super glue. just wind the silk out of the way. Try and um, wind the hackle so that it's facing backwards. We will we will wind the uh, silk through the hackle in a minute and that forces the hackle to actually face backwards in a minute anyway but Better just have it starting off that way. It doesn't have to be very bushy. Just hold it in place. Just lock it down. And trim it off. Now is what I do is I just hold the hackle backwards like that, run the silk over the top of it to start with, and then that gives it that nice tapered finish to the tail. Now is what I do is I wind the silk towards the eye of the hook, tie the eye of the hook a couple of times like that, just up and down a couple of times just to give it a bit of a tapered finish and I'll do the same with the tarpon fly that I did with the bonefish fly. I'll use a coloured thread to finish the fly off. And I, I, for, for the black death I like to use an orange thread. You can use any colour you like but I just like I just like using red in tarpon flies. They seem to they seem to like the colour. To be honest, I don't know why tarpon flies have this long tapered snout, but uh, it seems to be a tradition which I, I carry on. simple fly to tie. And then we adjust the length of the tuck. You don't want it too long because when you're casting it will tuck under the bend of the hook. But you want it long enough to actually have plenty of movement. Like that. There you have it. A very simple black death. After a great day's fishing, we spend the evening swapping tales of the day's adventures over a few drinks and some amazing local food. Thank you, darling. It's most that fish. Well, oh, that's the, that's the fish that I caught today. Can I? Roger and I are going tarpon fishing today, <laughs> and uh, and whatever else comes along. So uh, we're going to have a good day, aren't we, Roger? Yes, darling. <laughs> bye bye. That's got to be the best one of the week. <laughs>
The migration of adult tarpon begins in late spring. During the winter months, we target the juvenile tarpon that live in some very tight spaces in amongst the mangroves. The juvenile tarpon only adventure out from these spaces once they become mature adult fish. It was a lovely day. It's always yeah. a lovely day. We're fishing with mates. And uh, it's, for me, it's the best day of the week. And it happens to be the last day, but it was the best day. Oh, he's a good guy, didn't he? Oh. What'd you catch? You must have smashed Yeah. I caught 25 bonefish. Oh, fantastic. Two tarpon. Oh, uh, you greedy man. A barracuda, a oh, jack, and a snapper. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really good day. 
I had 16 fish and Gabby worked his socks off. Put me over fish all day long. So it was a really, really good day. Well, that's almost it, folks. Time to head back to port and make our way back to Havana. And what an amazing sunset to leave on. Well, what a week we have had. We've come back to Havana, um, where we, we are going to spend another few hours before we leave. But let's, let's just have a little thought about what we've achieved this week. We went to the yacht Georgiana um, and uh, we fished straight away. And most of the anglers on the first day uh, were into fish very quickly, mostly bonefish, just to get our eye in and, and things like that, casting, getting used to the wind. And then as the week progressed, um, our eyes got more used to the, the, uh, the sand and the, and the grass and we started catching increasingly more fish. It was a fantastic week. Uh, I think more than, I think between the group, I think we had more than 600 bonefish, if I'm right, um, and probably half a dozen tarpon, up to about 70 pounds. Um, jacks, snapper, um, barracuda all sorts of species of fish. It really was a good week. The weather wasn't that kind to us. It started off well and it got a bit breezy, uh, which made casting difficult. But nevertheless, the guides worked really hard for us and we caught more than, more than our share of fish, I would say. It was excellent fishing. Uh, bonefish, average size, probably two, two and a half pounds. Uh, one, one fish of nine pounds was caught and quite a few five and six pounders. So, to wrap it up, to conclude, um, Yacht Georgiana, fabulous accommodation, beautiful food, staff was fantastic, and um, the actual area of Zabata had a, had a variety of fish, which I'm told are there all the year round. So what more could we ask, really, as a travelling angler, to have that quality fishing? <laughs> So we've had an awesome time fly fishing for Zapata Flats for bonefish, tarpon and some other species. If you would like to join us on any of our adventures with Go Fishing Worldwide, why not pop along to our website at www.gofishingworldwide.com and book yourself onto a trip. Until next time, tight lines. <laughs>